All right, y'all, listen, man. Back here with another video for y'all. This right here is the sequel to my previous video, my NBA All-Star Ballot, my starters video. You guys can go back and watch that. But this right here is a video specifically for the reserves, man. And I'm not going to lie, disclaimer, there is a bunch of snubs. That's all I can say, bro. Before we start this video, um, a couple things I want to discuss. Uh, this video is definitely pre-recorded because I am in Boston right now. Uh, as you guys are watching this video, I am in Boston right now. Uh, enjoying my time. Because I'm not a Celtics game right now. That's all I can say, bro. I'm about to go to a Celtics game. Um, I'm going to be there for the whole entire weekend. So I want to pre-record some videos for y'all. So y'all know that I'm not inactive. Or y'all are like, where the fuck is Laney? You know what I'm saying? But I'm right here. I'm still making videos for y'all. And I'm still grinding as hard as possibly can for 2022, bro. You heard it here first. And the second thing, don't mind the damn hair. I'm about to get my hair done today. And my shit is looking crazy right now, bro. So I got the beanie on. But I really do want to start um by saying that there is going to be a lot of snubs in this video. Only because the NBA is getting so much better. I did say this in my reaction video that I was going to talk about it here. So here we are. The NBA is getting so much better. The talent is getting so much better, bro. And there's only so many people that I can fit in this damn video. They make my job so hard. This isn't my job, but, like, my job of making this video so goddamn hard only because there's only 24 spots. And I already filled up 10 of them, so now I gotta fill up 14. That was good math. I gotta fill up 14 more spots, 7 west, 7 east, and I do want to start with the west, and I want to start with my two guards, and that is James Harden and Zach Levine. It sucks that they did put DeMar DeRozan as a shooting guard when he literally has not played shooting guard for a long ass time probably since his toronto days if i can go back and look but i don't know why they put him as a shooting guard i do want to start with james harden um i know he started off very very slow at the beginning of the season but he has most definitely picked it up um the man had a couple 30 point games he had a couple 30 point uh double doubles triple doubles whatever you want to call it uh he's been having some pretty good games and he has been playing as an all-star throughout like 85 percent of the season so far that 50 percent was not good because he couldn't get to the foul line he couldn't draw those fouls like he wanted to and that is basically a stable part of his game and i don't know it kind of took a hit at the beginning of the season with the new foul rule and i did tell y'all that james harden was going to be fine and i'm sitting here telling y'all that I, I was right and i mean pretty much everyone figured out that james harden was going to you know figure it out and he did that's why i have him as one of my all-star reserves, I don't think that he gets it over DeMar Rosen or he gets it over Trey Young. But I do have him as basically a lock for the guard position on the bench. Same thing with Zach Levine, averaging 26. I mean, there's nothing more you can do. I mean, the Bulls are number one right now. They're number one in the East right now. And there is absolutely no way that I can give it to DeMar Rosen but not give it to Zach Levine. So Zach Levine has to be there. They're basically averaging identical stat lines there's just absolutely no way that i can give it to one and not give it to the other in this situation and you're going to be able to see that in this video because there's a lot of um teams that have two all-stars and then there's a lot of teams that have one all-stars and there's a bunch of teams that have no all-stars but we do have zach levine and james harden at the guard position on the bench now let's get to the forwards and we're going to start off with jason tatum i know what y'all are thinking bro to be honest with you both Jays have been playing like an all-star. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. And I can't give it to both. I really cannot give it to both. My hair is like irritating me. But I can't give it to both. Only because we are literally 10th in the conference. And both of our guys do not deserve to be an all-star this year. They are both playing at all-star levels. But if I had to give it to one, it would probably be Jason Tatum. To be honest with you, only the only reason why I can't give it to Jalen Brown is because Jalen Brown is a guard. That's another thing I want to talk about. I hate the way that the All-Star game is set up because I can't give it to Jalen Brown because I don't think that he deserves it over Zach Levine and I don't think he deserves it over James Harden. There's only two guard spots on the reserves and that's annoying to me. Like I wish that the reserve spot at least was like positionless a little bit because I know that the guard position basically rules the NBA right now. But that's the only reason why I can't give it to Jalen Brown. So let's give it to Jason Tatum instead. Jason Tatum has been playing at a high level. I mean, he started off pretty slow. Like, he was in a really bad slump. Uh, Y'all all saw it uh, opening night against the Knicks. And that continued on. It continued on. 
And then he had that one game where he just went, he just went crazy and he had a 30 point game. And the rest is history, basically. He's been playing out of also ever since that game. I mean, he's been pretty inconsistent. Um, not as consistent as he's been uh, the previous years. But he is still giving you all-star numbers. And he has been very good for the Celtics this season. That's all I can say. The next person I got, and it's a little iffy. I'm a little iffy with this one. It's Jimmy Butler. The thing is with Jimmy Butler, he has been out basically half the damn season when i was making this i was thinking basically hasn't everybody missed some time i mean everybody's inevitable but it missed some time because of this freaking covid situation i did it again health and safety protocols situation i think that's not fair for jimmy butler but right now he's out so i don't know if he doesn't make the all-star game who do i give it to you know what i'm saying and to be honest, I'll probably give this a bonus because the man's averaging 19 and 12 right now. There's absolutely no way that I can't reward that. That's only if Jimmy Butler doesn't play because Jimmy Butler's been playing like an MVP, like at the MVP level uh, at the beginning of the season before he had, uh, you know, a back injury or before he had, you know, his tailbone injury or before he, you know, he went into health and safety protocols. You know, he's been ridiculed with all that shit all season long, bro. But when he has been playing, he has been playing at that mvp all nba level and you know i gotta reward that somehow the heat are literally at the top of the conference right now not number one not number two not number three but they are right under at number four they're right there um with the best of the best in the east and there's absolutely no way that i can't give it to anybody you know i, ha I have to give them at least one all-star spot you know what i'm saying i think it'll be pretty unfair if i didn't uh so that's why i got jimmy butler up there and if Jimmy Butler can't make it to the All-Star Games, I don't know if he's going to play or not. I will most definitely give that spot to Sabonis for sure. The next guy I want to talk about is Jared Allen. Coming into the season, I was really high on this Cavaliers team. Because I was thinking if they can figure out like this forward situation that they got going on, then they could be a really good team. That's exactly what I said in one of my videos. And it has came true. They're sitting at 6th in the East right now. Only because Darius Garland has been very good. Jared Allen has been very good. Evan Mobley has been very good. Ricky Rubio was very good for them before he got injured. And that's the only reason why they fell to number six. But before Ricky Rubio got injured, they were literally number four. And they looked like they were about to, you know, climb their way to the top of the conference. But, you know, they had to take a step back because of all their injuries. Colin Sexton has been out. Um, Isaac Okoro has been out. Uh, you have Lamar Stevens filling in for him. And... There's absolutely no way that I cannot give Jared Allen this spot on the All-Star team. There's absolutely no way I can because he has been playing at a high level individually and for his team, he has been very good. Literally, Jared Allen came into the season. Everyone thought that the man was like just going to be a lob threat, but he's been so much more this season. And I love to see his progression as an NBA player because I have been following him since the beginning of his career. He has upped the tempo on offense. He has been so much better as a rim protector this season. Him off the pick and roll, he has been driving. I low-key saw him when he was put when they were playing the Kings, I low-key saw him switch onto a guard, and I was so amazed. Oh, just watching Jared Allen just makes me happy, bro. That's all I'm gonna say. Pause on that, by the way. Uh, but watching Jared Allen just makes me happy to be a basketball fan. And watching this whole Cavs team makes me happy to be a basketball fan, bro. Because, you know, I'm in the Ohio area. You feel me? I'm, I'm, I live in Ohio. And seeing the only team in Ohio do good, you know, I got to support it. And I got to root for it. You feel me? You feel me? Especially if my stuff is playing like shit right now. I got to do that. I want to get to some of my wild card, dark horses, uh, whatever picks, positionless picks that you want to call, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm just going to call it positionless pick. I don't really know. But I got Darius Garland. We're going to continue talking about the Cavaliers right now. Because there's absolutely no way that I can give it to Jared Allen and not give it to Darius Garland. Because they come as a package deal. You feel me? They're pick and roll partners. They come as a package deal, bro. Darius Garland has been that guy for the Cavaliers this whole entire season. And he has been the bright spot for their success that's all i can say because the man's averaging like what i want to say he's like averaging like 19 and 7 this is all off the top of my head by the way i have no stats or nothing all i have is just my picks right here but um i think he's averaging like 19 and 7 right now and on pretty good efficiency too i think he's like i think it's like 45 46 percent i don't really know but he has been playing at that all-star level and i think i got to reward it 
You feel me? I think I got to reward it. The next guy I want to talk about is Fred Van Vliet. Whew. Now, this one right here is definitely going to be a hot take. You can debate him with a couple other guys that I want to talk about, and I'm going to get to them in the stubs. But I think he gets the nod for me. I think he gets the nod. And the thing is, when he is on the court, the Raptors' offense and defense flows versus when he's off the court is fucking crazy, bro. The man, like, you can literally see it. You can literally see it. Because I was watching the Raptors and Suns last night, and man, oh, man. When Fred Van Vliet was on the court, they looked amazing. But when they were on the court, they looked lost. Their, his whole entire team looked lost. He has stepped into the role of the actual leader. I know there's this video. I don't know if y'all have seen it. But it's basically him, you know, coaching his guys. Man, timeout taken by the Milwaukee Bucks. And what somebody, an effort tonight. Look at, look at, he's look at he's, 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 so what he said. You. He goes, I'm a player, coach, and parent. <laughs> and I just, do not foul. He said, no, I, I, I joke with him. And, like, this is what I've been wanting to see from Van Van Vliet ever since Kawhi and Lowry left, bro. I was like, okay. So, Kyle Lowry's leaving. Kawhi Leonard left. I think they give the keys to the city to Fred Van Vliet. I think they do it. Not Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet. And he has actually stepped into that role and he has transitioned into that role perfectly. When he was playing with Kawhi and Kyle Lowry, he was just that guy who can give you buckets. You all saw the 2019 NBA Finals, but he has became and blossomed into so much more. And I love to see it, bro. The dude's averaging like seven assists right now, 22 points, like five rebounds. He is amazing, bro. He's amazing, and I love to see it. He actually transitioned into a point guard, bro. I just love to see it, bro. And he has been tearing up this season. The Raptors are on. The Raptors were on like a six, seven game winning streak before they lost to the Suns, and they lost in kind of a cheap way because I hate when the Suns do that. I'm gonna get to that in my other video, but Fred VanVleet has been lighting it up on the court. He has nothing but thirty point games. For like the past like six games. Dude's been amazing. The dude's been amazing. Enough for Fred Van Vliet though. Let's get to some of the snubs. And the one that I can really, really tell you off the top of my head. And people are really going to be like, what the fuck? Why the hell is he not in here? But I think he'll make the all-star team. He just didn't make my all-star battle. You feel me? It's LaMelo Ball. Beat that nigga ass! Beat that nigga ass! LaMelo Ball is like the perfect person that you would want in an all-star game that's why i think he's gonna make it and like if he does make it over fred van vliet i'll be completely fine with that only because the way that he plays is just made for the all-star game he is such a flashy player he's one of the most electrifying players in basketball right now and he's just fun to watch so i'd love to see him in the all-star game i just don't think that he deserves to be there over fred van vliet fred van vliet has been on a different type of level than what LaMelo Ball has. I mean, LaMelo Ball is his second season in the league and he is averaging like 19, seven and eight right now. I mean, that's basically good enough to make an all-star team. Cause I mean, the way that he, you know, controls the offense for this Hornets team is crazy. I just think that Fred Van Vliet just deserves it over him. That's just my personal opinion. Um, but if he does make it, I'm not mad at that. Another person I did talk about before in the video is Jalen Brown. Uh, I've already explained why I think Jalen Brown should be an all-star, but the only reason why he's not an all-star in my eyes is because there's not enough, you know, spots for him. I think that he deserves it over Jason Tatum. But the thing is, Jalen Brown is a guard and Jason Tatum is a forward, and I cannot put him on this damn list, bro, and it sucks. It sucks because I think Jalen Brown deserves it more than Tatum, but there's no spots. I don't think that he deserves it over Garland. I don't think he deserves it over Van Vliet. That's all I can say, man. All right, now to get to the Western Conference. Um, I think that there's a couple locks, like a lot of locks, actually. And the first person I do want to talk about, I want to start straight with the forward position because I want to talk about this guy, like, right now. It's Draymond Green. So when I was making my all-star ballot, when I was making my all-star starter ballot, I completely forgot about uh, Draymond Green being an all-star starter for the forwards. But I genuinely do think that Paul George deserves it over him that's just me and a couple other guys can't remember lebron and uh Jokic. i think they deserve it over him but he has been damn near the best defender all fucking season long and i think it's time that we actually acknowledge it you feel me he has been the encore coach for the best team in the league right now well 
kind of the best team in the league right now. They don't have the best record. They have a second best record uh, in the league right now. And I think that that deserves some praise. That is very fun to watch. I mean, he controls the defense. He controls the offense. He is basically the anchor that makes this team run. He is the gears to the Warriors team, basically. He's the one who brings the ball up. He's the one who controls the offense. He's the one who controls the defense. He has been their best um defender all season and he leads their team in assists he's been doing it ever since he's been doing it ever since they've been winning championships and shit like that because he is that guy he is basically that jack of all trades but the thing is he can't really do it offensively they can't really score the ball but he can do basically everything else besides that so i genuinely think that he should get the nod because if you don't reward defense then why the fuck play defense? You feel what I'm saying? And I genuinely think that Draymond Green should get an all-star spot. And I'm so stupid for not putting him um, as my all-star starter over Paul George. But the only reason why I didn't is because I literally didn't see him on the list and I completely forgot about him. So there's that. But let's go straight back to the guards. Cause I just wanted to talk about Draymond Green for a second. I genuinely think he deserves it. Bro. I love watching Draymond Green play basketball. Um, but I want to talk about Devin Booker for a second because he gets the nod for me. Uh, Devin Booker has been amazing this season. Obviously, he hasn't been as efficient as he's been in previous seasons uh, for overall field goal, but his three-point percentage literally makes him want me to put him right here because the man is averaging 40% from three, bro. He's averaging 40% from three, and that is the highest it has ever been. The man is shooting lights out. He is a shooting guard, and he is shooting that fucking pill, bro. And I think he deserves this spot. I don't think he deserves um, all-star starter because, I mean, that belongs to John, ja that belongs to um, Steph Curry. But I think that he deserves a spot, and he's basically a lock. And another lock is Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell has been crazy this season. He's been good. I haven't been watching that many Jazz games this season as I would previous seasons, only because they kind of have the same exact team, minus, like, Rudy Gay and, like, Hassan Whiteside and, like, Eric Pascal or some shit like that. But I see the stats, and I see how good this team has been, and I got to give it to them. They're, what, third in the conference right now? I got to give it to them. I got to give it to at least one person. But, you know what? I'm not going to give it to one person on this Jazz team. I'm going to give it to two because we're going right back to the forward position, and I'm giving it to Rudy Gobert. I mean, he deserves a damn spot. He's basically the anchor that makes his team run. The same thing that goes for Draymond applies to Rudy Gobert, to be honest with you, because him in the pick and roll is destroying basically every single NBA team. And there's absolutely no way that I cannot reward Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell uh, for, this all, for these all-star spots, to be honest with you, because I think that they both deserve it. Now, one person I was talking about in my all-star starters video is Carl Anthony Towns. You know, I was kind of wavering between Carl Anthony Towns and Paul George about who should be the all-star starter here. And I genuinely think that it should have been Paul George, but that's when I forgot about Draymond Green. But I did say that Cat was going to make a spot on this all-star list because he deserves it. I mean, as I was saying in the video, when you're on a bad team, but you're a good individual player, you're not gonna get as much recognition as you are being a good player on a good team. I don't want that to be a thing going forward because I think Cat should have been an all-star like a couple years prior and his team was just bad, that's all it was. But now they're sitting ninth in the conference and he's finally getting recognition. He just had like a 40 and nine game the other day. Um, he just deserves to be in this spot. He just deserves to be in this spot. That's all I can say. Now going on to my position list, whatever you wanna call it, I still don't even know what to call it. But um, I'm going to give these two spots to Luka and CP3. The reason why I'm going to give it to Luka is because obviously the same thing with James Harden. He started off pretty damn slow. I'm not going to lie. He was out of shape. He was not, you know, the, the Luka Doncic that we see like in year three or year two or year, even year one. I mean, the man was playing bad, but, you know, he picked it up and he has been picking it up. He did have an injury. Uh, that sat him out for like like 11 10 games but he has came back and he has been amazing the Mavs are on like a six game winning streak right now six seven game winning streak right now and they have been very good same thing with Chris Tapps Porzingis I would love to get Chris Tapps uh, a spot and this could literally go straight into the snubs but I got to talk about CP3 but I really do want to give Chris Tapps Porzingis a spot because he has been playing amazing uh through like his last like five six games but I can't because I think all three guys 
at the forward position deserve it. Going to CP3, uh, this ties into the Warriors. If I'm going to give it to Steph Curry and Draymond Green, I gotta give the Suns two All-Stars. Can't just be Devin Booker. Because there's gotta be, you know, two All-Stars on that damn team. And it's gotta be CP3. It's gotta be CP3. There's no other way around it. I mean, you cannot average 10 assists and not get any praise for it. Same thing goes with Draymond Green. If you're not going to get rewarded for defense, why the fuck play defense? And if you're not going to get rewarded for passing the ball at a high rate, then why the fuck would you pass the ball? You know what I'm saying? But that's just that's just how I see it. Um, those are my picks. Uh, this video is not how I wanted it to come out, but this is how it's going to come out. Um, but that's all I got for y'all today. I got another video to film for y'all today and i'm going to be talking about every single western conference team so stay tuned for that uh that should be coming out in like a couple days or so but that's all i got for y'all today i'm out this bit